uh, at the outset, good evening uh, to all of you. Uh, and uh, firstly, uh, thank you so much, uh, Harini, for uh, inviting me to uh, such a beautiful platform. Uh, thank you, Harish ji, for uh, you know uh, explaining to me the entire concept of uh, HR milestone, and uh, you know what uh, you guys are doing is absolutely revolutionary. So, and I'm really, really honored to be a part of uh, this entire journey. Uh, and I look forward to some exciting, uh, you know, um, insights uh, today when I'm going to be sharing something about uh, my passion, uh, you know, something that I love to the core, which is learning and development. Uh, now, before I start about uh, learning and development and start to core myths and uh, facts about it, I'd like to start with a very, very, very small story. And uh, this uh, story uh, is about, uh, you know, a fox who was, uh, you know, at the banks of the river. And uh, there was a stream, and the fox wanted to cross over that particular river. Uh, the fox wasn't able to find anything, so he looked around, and uh, you know, on the branch of a tree, he saw an owl. Now, because it was daytime, of course, the owl couldn't see. But uh, you know, the fox was a little perturbed, and he wanted a solution. So he said, uh, "Owl, uh, you know, I'm in a problem. Can you help me?" The owl said, "Yes, uh, I've, I'm here almost every single day. So tell me, how can I help you?" The fox said, "I want to cross uh, this." A stream of river but I'm unable to do that and you know I've tried so many things but I'm just not able to go to the other side so uh, the owl says all right uh, can you tell me what all have you tried and uh, the fox said all right you know so I tried swimming and going across but I couldn't go through uh, I saw a fish swim in the same way so I thought even I can swim I said okay what else have you tried so I tried jumping very very high because I saw a bird flying over the stream and going to the other side. So I thought even I can fly and, you know, go to the other side. So right, have you tried anything else? Uh, asked the owl. And said, yes, I, uh, you know, um, I saw a beaver, you know, trying to cut through that wood, the branch of the tree. So I thought I'll make a plank and, uh, you know, then go through. So, you know, I've tried all these things, but, you know, it's just not working. And the owl said, all right, before I give you a solution, why don't you look in the river and see, uh, you know, what you see in that particular river? Uh, and the fox goes through, he looks in the stream and the fox sees its own reflection. So the owl asks, uh, what do you see? Do you see a fish? The fox says, no. The owl says, do you see uh, a bird? The owl says, no. Uh, the fox says, no. The owl asks, uh, do you see a beaver? And the fox says, no, uh, I see a fox over here. So the owl says, says, why are you trying to be somebody that you are not? And the answer to that is, uh, the fox says that, you know, all these people, all these birds and animals are doing things faster and more efficient than I am able to do. So if they are able to do it, why am I not able to do it? And if I'm not able to do it, I feel like a failure. I really want to cross the stream. So do you have a solution? Don't ask me all these things. Do you have a solution? And the owl says, yes, I have a solution. And the solution, the solution is, be a fox. The foxes, but foxes are not uh, trained to cross the river stream. The owl says, so what are foxes meant to do? He said, the foxes are meant to be sharp, they're supposed to adapt, and they're supposed to be witty. And in, the owl said, all right, so look at the stream of the river and think what you can do. And the fox looks at the river stream and says, oh, the river stream is slowing down slowly. And slowly, I, if I wait for uh, two or three more hours, I will be able to cross the stream. So let's wait for three hours. Fox says, fair. They waited for three hours. The stream goes a little down. The fox crosses. Say, hooray, yes, I have crossed this particular stream. And the owl said, what have you done? And the fox said, I am being myself. The reason I'm sharing this story right at the beginning of, uh, you know, demystifying L&D myths is the biggest myth in LND is that benchmarking is something that works. There are models which come from the West. There are models which have been given by people. There are models, tools, frameworks, methodologies available on Google. And every LND professional today is running after those models, running after those frameworks, running after those methodologies, and trying to fit in their entire structure into those methodologies just to show that we have done such a great job. The fact, my dear friends, is it never works for a long time. The reason I say that is the methodologies or the frameworks that have been built are built through observation, 
are built through some subjectivity and based on certain inputs that certain people give. Now, every person doesn't uh, think in the same way, and that's exactly where every organization doesn't have the same challenge. Even if they have the same challenge, the kind of people will be different. The kind of leadership will be different. The kind of mindset will be different. The kind of goals, targets, everything will be different. So how do you think that one particular model, even if you edit that entire thing, will fit into your particular section? So the first myth that I wanted to bust with this story is you have to start learning to be yourself. You have to come up with your own models, own methodologies, own tools and own frameworks in order to bring about a sustainable change in the organization. And I'll give you a very, very interesting example. Uh, you know, two years back when I was consulting with an organization on uh, design thinking and, you know, uh, an L&D professional uh, came up to me and said, uh, you know, uh, we, we have done all this now. What you're supposed to do is uh, there will be a feedback form which will go at the end of this program. And after two months, I want you to give me 10 questions, which are multiple choice, which the participants will fill down and we will see how effective this training has been. My simple question to uh, that person was, all right, if the person gets 80%, that means has he or she done a fantastic job? Um, yeah, you know, of course, if they can score 80 out of uh, 100, they've done a fantastic job. Why not? At least we'll be able to prove to the management that, you know, we are doing some learning effectiveness today. And that is where the problem starts. This is where the mindset of benchmarking or looking at other things start. Because my next question was, where did you get this idea from? And he said, you know, one of my friends is working in a competitor company and they are doing the same thing and they are finding it very, very useful. So I thought we'd also do the same thing. This is where most L&D professionals today are failing. And the reason they are failing is they're trying to benchmark others. They're trying to emulate others and they're trying to do things which are not unique to their organization. This is also where, uh, you know, the L&D professionals are not able to create a niche for themselves. And this is where the training companies are thriving today. What the training companies are doing is they are bringing an outside view. They are bringing something new. And, you know, the, the organization feels that they've done something which is very, very good. And when that happens, that wow factor happens, you feel that you've done a great job. But that wow factor is only going to stay for a certain point in time. Because what starts as a wow? slowly becomes a hygiene and then slowly it will become a routine and you will start expecting that this has to happen every single time. So myth number one is do not benchmark. Or, uh, myth number one is use uh, benchmark. The fact is you should not benchmark anybody. You should become the benchmark for others by creating something new which is customizable to your own organization or to all your own startup or to your own SME or to all your own clients. Now, the argument that many of the participants give me is, you know, we don't have the time to think. And, you know, when we don't have the time to think, we are so, so, uh, you know, fix, uh, fixed up in this LMS thing. Uh, you know, we were just got in an SAP. Uh, the, the SAP has something called as a success factor. We have an LMS. We have to put in data. Uh, while they are automated systems, we are not able to spare time for ourselves. And that, my dear friends, is the second myth. People have made learning and development very, very transactional. Whereas L&D is supposed to be very, very transformational. And this is the difference between critical thinking and reflective stroke intuitive thinking. What I mean by uh, critical thinking or intuitive uh, you know, or, or reflective thinking, the difference between the two is in critical thinking, what you typically do is you go step by step. You go one step after the other, whereas in reflective or intuitive thinking, you go with the thoughts along with things that you are doing, along with the problem statement, you are trying to think of solutions and trying to get those solutions. And when you do that, what happens is you are able to come up with unique ideas, you're able to come up with unique solutions, and you're able to differentiate yourself from the others because you would have created something which is your own baby. And here I want to give you another very beautiful example uh, that, uh, you know, I faced in one of the organizations wherein, you know, uh, the l &D head at that point in time, and this was 10, 11 years back, you know, when I was just entering uh, the l &D space from the HR operations and the talent acquisition space. And, uh, you know, the l &D head at that point in time said, uh, we use the Kirkpatrick model for learning effectiveness. So please look at all the four stages, look at all your learning interventions, Start putting them in, you know, level one, two, three, four, and, uh, you know, uh, finish it off. 
and uh, you know my simple argument was over there so don't you think kirkpatrick model is a little too long and also there is uh, you know a philips model that has come in which gives you the roi as well so what about the roi because we are a support function we are supposed to think like a support function let's do what is already available do not try to think something new and this is where i got taken aback my thought process about lnd was very very different and this was a very very big surprise to me so i continued doing that for some point in time but i got really frustrated and i changed my job that point in time there was no boss so i was allowed to experiment and do things this is where i came up with a formula which converts your behavioral programs which give you a direct roi from the revenue perspective and i went to the ceo at that point in time and said sir even if you do a communications program today what will happen is you will be able to see a direct impact on your revenue and when you are able to see a direct impact on your revenue you will know whether this training has been effective or not and he said bro chhodo na mazak mat karo subah subah aake kyun mere sath mazak kar raha why are you joking with me give me 6 months and i will prove it to you that i can do this i implemented that for 6 months and this my dear friends is the third myth the third myth is that repeatable proven processes will always help you to become an a more efficient learning team whereas the fact is that if you come up with something unique to your particular organization that will be able to give you a direct impact on revenue which changes the perception of learning and development from a support function to a profit center and when that happens you are actually able to contribute to the organization directly the other ceo at that point in time said so that did not believe that you could do something like this you could pull something off like this i really wanted to implement this for all other programs and then we started doing that it took us 2 years to build that but that organization is till date and it's been around what 8 years they are till date using that particular formula because they are able to see a direct impact on their revenue and it's a formula based piece that i had got there is no level 1 there is no level 2 there is no level 3 there is no level 4 so the myth that repeatable proven processes will help you to become a more efficient learning uh, person i'm sorry my dear friends that's an absolute myth the fact of the matter is are you able to add value to the individual who is going through your intervention and are you able to add value to the organization at the end of the day wherein they can see something in terms of numbers something in terms of objectification and if they are able to see that you will have changed your perception as a learning professional completely now a, a lot of arguments also come to me over here and uh, you know they say that uh, you know bro you, you say all these things but you know it may not be possible in all industries and trust me my dear friends i have worked with five industries five different industries and it has worked with all five industries per se it has it is not industry specific this formula based piece is something that will help you to convert all your subjectivity into objectivity this is where my fourth myth comes in which uh, is taken from the first uh, example or the story that i shared the story was about uh, you know the fox trying to present certain data and people use uh, the word trainer and facilitator very interchangeably and this is where the difference comes into the picture now if you were in the situation of the fox and the owl the owl if it was a presenter would have done all right fox so what is it that you are facing right now you are at the bank of a river there is a stream flowing you want to go that side you have tried being the fish you have tried being the bird you have tried being the beaver and you are not able to go through what is it that can be done and you finish that off and you are out of there that is known as a presenter that is just presenting information uh, which typically happens with uh, you know a, a lot of programs that i had attended in the past where there were people reading from the slides so you know the audience is not blind they can read from the slides but no i want to present so i will present and that is a presenter the second part comes when you are a trainer same fox and owl the owl would have said all right let me train you how to make a plank let me train you how to utilize this soil and the stones and all of that and try and build something which can take you to the other side and if you are able to do that please give me a feedback on whether i did good or not and i will give you an effective test question here at the end of two months and you tell, you tell me whether it was effective or not this is known as training when you are trying to train the other person on certain skill set that this person may not have so the owl would have tried to train and probably the owl is a subject matter expert 
who is trying to give that information or knowledge to the fox in order to see how this thing can be built. What the fox, actually, what the owl actually did was it became a facilitator, wherein it asked certain reflective questions. It asked certain questions which made the fox realize that there was something which was going wrong. And what was going wrong is something that when the fox realized, the fox said, all right, I think I have a solution. And uh, if I wait for some time and if I have patience, I will be able to cross over. And that, my dear friend, is a facilitator. Now, there are other streams also, which is a coach, a mentor, uh, you know, a transformational a sports coach and all of that. But I'm not getting into those pieces. But the basic difference uh, between a presenter, trainer, and a facilitator is very, very simple. Is that presenter presents information, a trainer trains on something which uh, the, uh, the trainer has a uh, subject matter expertise on, and a facilitator gives an experience to the, uh, to the participants that help them to think on their own because the default state of the mind is it shuts down when there is a problem and a facilitator helps them to come out of this particular piece. So that is another myth that uh, I wanted to bust over here. Uh, when people ask me, uh, you know, uh, Bruhas, are you a trainer or are you a facilitator? And I say, I am a more of a facilitator than a trainer. All right, and that is where the difference is and that is a, another myth versus a fact that you need to understand. Another very interesting conversation that I was having with uh, somebody, uh, you know, in the past was about, uh, you know, with, with, a, with a training partner and the training partner calls me and says, all right, brother, I've got a reference from, uh, you know, so-and-so, so-and-so person, and I believe you are a soft skills trainer. And I, I, I managed to smile, you know, and the person realized and, uh, you know, the person said, why are you smiling? And I said, no, you're wrong. I'm not a soft skills trainer. Oh, but your profile says that you are into, you know, communication training, design thinking, emotional intelligence, and all those pieces. So I said, yeah, those are behavioral skills. Those are not soft skills. No, no, there are both these understand, you know, there are soft skills and there are hard skills. All right. Soft skills are related. To, okay, fine. I understand that, that all of you come from a school of thought, that there is something which is called a soft skill. Now, please answer one question. The question I want to ask you here is, can you really feel those skills? How do you know whether it is soft or hard? How do you really know whether, you know, uh, how do you differentiate between a soft and a hard? It's either behavioral, functional, or technical. What is soft skill and what is hard skill? And I've never understood this particular piece, but, you know, the industry is, you know, uh, so much into this that, you know, everyone comes to me and says that, bro, you know, this is soft skills, this is hard skills. And I, I really don't understand this particular piece. This is another myth that I want to bust over here. Whenever somebody comes and tells you that, are you a soft skills trainer? Please say, no, I am a behavioral skills trainer, or I'm a functional skills trainer, or I am a technical trainer. I am not a soft or a hard skill trainer. This is another myth that the entire industry is into today. And uh, what happens when we have a conversation is, you know, I feel out of uh, the entire audience because, you know, the entire audience is laughing. Then that, bro, tum itne saal se training mein ho, tum ghar kya rahe? Tumne ab tak makhi maari hai ka. What are you really doing in the training industry when you don't know what is a soft skill and a hard skill? And all I can do is smile at them and say, all right, you know, you guys, you are the best. I can't do anything about it. Another very interesting myth that uh, came to me six months back was, and this is, uh, I think, Harini's and my, my favorite topic about motivational trainers, all right? Now, uh, you know, uh, the biggest myth is that these motivational trainers are always very happy. Uh, they have everything in the world, uh, you know, uh, which is money, peace, happiness, and everything that they have. And they, you know, bring this blood surge inside you. blood surge You feel like, wow, I'm going to go and change the world tomorrow. But trust me, that motivation doesn't stay for more than 10 minutes, 20 minutes, one day, maximum a week. And, uh, you know, when, when that motivation stays for maximum a week, what you try and blame on is, oh, no, trainer to theek tha, but theek hai, I think you know, next time kar, karenge try. So that is a motivational trainer. So I was having this very interesting conversation because I wanted to bust my own myth. And, you know, everyone was telling me, bro, you should attend this person's uh, training. You know, you will become a better trainer. And I'm like, okay, fine. You know, let, let me go ahead. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, this is where uh, let me go and ask him. So I went to this guy and said, you know, he's a good friend of mine. All right. So I'm not taking his name. Otherwise he'll kill me. 
सिस्टर्स लाइक मेरी एक फ्रेंड यू नो दिस इज अ फैंटास्टिक स्पीच बाय द वे एंड आई थिंक तुमने लोगों को इतना मोटिवेट किया इट वाज एन ऑडियंस ऑफ 500 ऑट दैट यू नो दे आर गोइंग टू गो एंड चेंज द वर्ल्ड टुमारो लाइक ब्रो थैंक यू सो मच यू नो आई हैव ऑलवेज टोल्ड यू यू शुड कम एंड अटेंड माय वर्कशॉप्स आई लाइक या आई सेड इट वाज एन आई ओपनर सो माय डियर फ्रेंड टेल मी अम यू नो आर यू रियली हैप्पी बाय द एंड ऑफ दिस स्पीच व्हाट आर यू थिंकिंग राइट नाउ अरे यार ब्रो यू नो वो उसका पेमेंट आना बाकी है ये मेरा क्लाइंट से ये पेमेंट आना बाकी वो पेमेंट आना बाकी है आई डोंट नो व्हाई दिस इवेंट गाइस डोंट पे ऑन टाइम या यू नो आई हैव टू स्पेंड टाइम विद माय फैमिली आई एम नॉट एबल टू डू दैट बा 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 एंड लाइक ब्रो यू नो सम टाइम्स आई फील सो डीमोटिवेटेड एंड आई से व्हाई डोंट यू लुक एट योर ओन वीडियो प्रोबेब्ली यू स्टार्ट फीलिंग मोटिवेटेड एंड द आंसर दैट ही गिव वाज नो नो ब्रो दिस इज फॉर देम दिस इज नॉट फॉर मी फॉर मी इट इज समथिंग इज व्हेन यू डू अ सेशन आई विल कम टू योर सेशन एंड आई विल लिसन टू यू सो the myths that motivational trainers are always this you know you know charged up and happy and all of that is something which is an absolute myth what the motivational trainers do is they give you stories they give you stories about different people they give you stories that will at that point in time touch your emotional uh, uh, you know reinforcement and bring that blood surge because that is what motivational speakers are supposed to do but what will really motivate you to change in the long term and what is the actual learning and development team's role is to bring about a long term sustainable change over a period of time which means that it has to be incremental change step by step and not something which is like a 90 minute ka session ki aap maza aa gaya chalo chal, chalte hain and that will never never sustain so uh, the lnd teams uh this this is a you know a, a humble request you know uh, we used to do the employee engagement you know tgifs and all of that and uh, you know the, the ceos used to come and say you know we need to do something on friday to motivate this team can we do an outbound program or can we do this or can we do that and the only reason why people come to an outbound is unko dagu pe nahi hoti all right it is not for any learning or it is not for any uh, motivation that they are looking at they are going khana kya hai daru milegi ki nahi maza aayega ki nahi chill marenge ki nahi and this why i'm saying this is from personal experience and this is another myth the myth was that when i was going and you know attempting to create this outbound program uh you know this uh, these people the participants came to me and said bro kya kya arrangement hua hai and i'm like uh, you know we are working on the learning module we are working on the entire is you know do me kya are 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 wo sab chhod menu kya hai menu batao tum like where have you seen uh, you know in front of my cabin written you know lnd and fnb you know food and beverages ka section nahi hai this is a learning and development section please let's start to focus on that but the point is everyone has a perception about uh, you know the training teams or the learning teams that you know they want to keep the people happy by just getting in some trainer and giving a session and going away and that perception is not immediate that has been built over a period of time and now it is very very difficult to change that perception because the myth is that the training team is supposed to arrange for training programs and mind my words arrange for training programs wherein they can get the best of the trainers and get the best of the food so that they can say bro training badhiya tha bahut maza aaya whereas the learning teams are actually supposed to create an entire ecosystem which helps the people to change the way they think about their own function change the way they think about their own self make them realize what they are doing where they are going wrong and how they can bring all those pieces into their work life why this is a problem and why this is a perception is all the learning teams are focusing on seven or eight outcomes from the training program because you invested 1 lakh 2 lakh 3 lakh 10 lakh so you know you have to show na kamne sath outcome liye hain but my dear friends that's another myth the fact of the matter is if let's say those 50 people choose any one thing from the program that they can go and apply in their function trust me your entire perception will change about learning and development as a function the myth today is that we have to have eight or nine outcomes of a learning intervention and when you have a uh, you know um, eight or nine outcomes of a learning intervention you are absolutely all over the place because you're just trying to fill in those 16 hours and not even 16 hours because do ghanta to lunch break jata na ek ghanta idhar ek ghanta udhar aadha aadha ghanta jahan pe participants aaram se aayenge apni man marzi se oh i miss can you please repeat whatever you said and the trainer is very happy because he doesn't have to do anything the trainer is like ek slide dikha diya look at that image now tell me what do you think and the people start thinking i don't know what they are thinking they come up with something and you know your outcome is achieved how is it even possible how is one image and that reflection going to give you a sea of change it's not possible so instead of focusing on seven 
or eight outcomes focus on one outcome or maximum two or three outcomes and out of that let the people tell you what is one habit that they want to change rather than saying what is one skill that they are going to apply because trust me when the habit changes the application of skills will happen automatically today the attitude of people when they come to a training program and you know this is what i'm facing even when i'm you know doing the things from the outside is you know once the training is over people students come to me the parents work all right this is a very nice thing ek baat batao kya ha please batao um you know uh, what happens over here is that bro hamara management na humko allow nahi karta ye sab karne ke liye so while you said this is to be done that is to be done our management is a little bureaucratic you know you know they don't allow us to do these things and you know we are very restricted and all of that and here i give them one a very simple example and the example is you know it's related to all of us let's say you have to go from your house to the office and you leave uh, the house at 7:30 every single day to reach your office at 9 and you know you've done that continuously for let's say 2 months 3 months and one day there is a lot of traffic and you reach at 9:45 somebody comes and says uh, why are you late oh that is because of traffic you know i left on time i am not at fault that person is at fault and why is that person not because traffic tha शोल्डर and uh, you know there was a beautiful book that i had read which is called monkey of your shoulder and uh, you know it was a very interesting example that this person gives uh, he says that whenever somebody comes to you and says you know i have this 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 problem and you react by saying or you converse by saying all right i'll look into it that means you are getting an affirmation giving an affirmation and the monkey has passed from his shoulder to your shoulder and you are now under that accountability as to what you're really going to do and what you're really not going to do so choosing words carefully is very very important for a learning and development person because when the participant is in a victim mindset that has become a habit so irrespective of the uh, you know maximum uh, effective trainer you get you get the best of the trainers in the world you get the best of the content best of the tools best of the methodologies why is training failing today is because you are focusing on skills and competence rather than habits attitude and capability today if you are passionate about something you will go gung ho and you know you will try to do as much as possible but this is just a job no there is a salary which is coming to you so jo bola jayega wo hum karenge fir end of the year humko waise bhi gali deni hai ki humko 8 taka 9 taka hi increment mila hai inflation 11 taka hai chai coffee break pe hum kya baat karenge so what is happening is these habits are coming from you these habits are not coming from the others this perception is created by us and when we create this kind of a perception my dear friends lnd department is always under this illusion that we are doing a great job but the actual fact of the matter is you are mostly doing the tick in the box jobs now you know i uh, you know uh, there are many of the learning uh, professionals wherein i am going today and they are doing a fantastic job for their organization they are doing tremendously and you know when i talk to them i get to learn so much and i said you know boss hats off to you you are thinking like this i'm really really happy because i just uh, wish that i could do something like that in the past and when i am going to the other uh, organizations i give them the same thing saying you know this is what is happening in this particular industry why don't you try doing this and see what happens and what does not happen and some of them accepted but some of them are like bro they yeah ye industry mein nahi chalta tumko kya pata is industry ke bare mein tum aaye ho training karo chale jao bas ho gaya and that's not the way a learning and development function functions so that's a coordinator's role it's not really a learning person's role and that is the difference between training coordination and learning and uh, i'll i'll give you one very uh, interesting myth about learning and development because you know it's a very jargonish or jargon oriented function so you know we have this uh, you know thing of using jargons and you know i uh, had re- i had gone through an instructional design workshop and uh, you know i came back and i just wanted to show off you know that i have learned something new so i started talking to people like hey, have you heard about principle eclecticism and they like kya bol raha hai bhai to what are you saying and like nahi ye maine kuch naya seekha hai and when i tried applying it they like dekha tera eclecticism kaam aaya nahi kaam aaya na to seedha seedha baat kar there is no point in giving jargon 
the point i'm trying to make over here is that lnd may not there are many theorists that are sitting at multiple positions and these theorists come from saying bro what you are talking about is not learning it is od uh, you know it is not really training it is this it is this it is this it is not called a program it is called an intervention this i'm like okay fine i understand that but the end result is in no 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 you have to get your definitions right and when i go to a functional head and say sir aap jo bol rahe ho training program nahi wo ek intervention hai are bro chhod na tere ko jo karna hai kar par mere ko ye solution chahiye so the lnd person or the lnd team is is fixed between you know two pieces as to should they become jargonist because the entire uh, conclave you know and uh, harin is going through to many many conclaves so she will know this people just use jargon and they don't know what those jargons mean also but somebody is using it somewhere we also should use it and because we are using it we we have to prove to the world and when an audience member asks the question they like ah we'll take this offline and as soon as that response comes to you trust me that that person doesn't know what he or she is talking about the thing is that when you use jargons what happens is those jargons if they are not understood by your user there is no point in using those jargons because the learning function is not going to be a function of languages the learning function is supposed to add value and they are supposed to make complex things simple and not simple things complex it is never that it is always making complex things simple so you may have all the tools you may have all the framework but when you are presenting that to somebody it has to be in a manner that is simplistic which is easy to understand and which hits their brain immediately so that you know they understand the value you are trying to bring to the table and why i say that is the the myth or the illusion or the perception that people have about a learning team is ke ha agar learning and development team ka presentation hai definitely there will be jargons over here so we have to go there prepare so everyone starts looking up merriam webster's and starts looking at definitions ke humko kaun sa definition aaj jaan ke jana hai so your job as a learning function is not to use jargons and show that we know english as a language we have mastery over that language you can talk in hindi you can talk in gujarati you can talk in uh, malayalam you can talk talk in tamil you can talk in any language that you want to the idea is for you to actually put your point forward in a way that the person understands let's say you are working in a manufacturing unit and you have to go and speak to the workmen who are 50 50 152 years old and you start going and using jargons with them kya samjhe ho unko what will they understand they will be staring at you and you know the, the stare is very very bahut khatarnak stare hota ho when they stare at you you feel that you know you've done something really wrong and you feel what is it that is going wrong the only thing that is probably going wrong is you are going all over the place and they're not understanding a single word that you are saying so how to make complex things simple is the function of a learning uh, professional and it is not the other way around so de jargonize your entire learning function and try and bring uh, you know things which are more simple to this uh, particular function which is a beautiful function known as learning and development and uh, here uh, you know i uh, you know i'm i'm sure there is uh, Uh, time uh, we would want to ask a lot of questions as to aap kaise kar sakte ho kaise nahi so i want to end this uh, you know segment of mine with a very small story and uh, the the small story is about your worth as an individual and uh, you know this is uh, where uh, you know uh, a father was dying and uh, this father gave uh, a golden watch a gold plated watch to his son and he said you know this is given by uh, your grandfather and uh, you know i wanted to check the value of this particular watch can you go to a watch shop and uh, bring me ke kitna value milega so this person goes there uh, he goes and uh, the son comes back and says uh, dad they are willing to give 250 bucks and he's like okay uh, why don't you go to the town side and check because you know wahan pe uh, you know uh, aisa hoga waisa hoga and all so he goes you know jack ke bhi he goes he comes back and says dad again 250 you know nothing more and uh, the father says all right one last wish to wish my dear son uh, can you go to the museum and uh, check uh, the value of this particular watch and he said that please i mean they are also going to be saying the same thing so just go and check once and when he comes back from the museum he is absolutely flabbergasted and he says that they are willing to pay me 1 crore for this watch saying that this is an antique so the father says my dear son what have you learned from this story and the son over there says that uh, you know i have to know my own worth probably the place at which i am uh, working right now or the place at which i'm trying to give my knowledge or trying to share my uh, you know feelings is not able to understand my value 
but I should not be thinking of myself as a watch to be sold in the normal watch stores, but I should be able to think of myself as a person who holds high value and I should be able to set my own standards for myself rather than looking at who all LND team, LND manager kya kar raha hai, who all LND head kya kar raha hai and you know, think of, of changing my way because my dear friends, all of you are unique. Each one of you has the worth of that golden watch. You just need to know where your right place is. So please do not think that you, if you're doing something new and you are getting criticized for it, you are doing something wrong. No, that's not the fact. You should keep yourself as the benchmark and move forward and stop comparing yourself with the others. And that is the Brahmastra that I want to give to the entire LND fraternity. Because if you try and copy others, you will always remain behind them. But if others start copying you at some point in time, that is the time you know that you have been a worthy learning professional. With that, I would open uh, the floor to uh, Harini and uh, you know, if, if she wants to have a conversation or any one of you who wants to ask any question. Yeah. Yes, so so I'll, I'll take it on from here and I'll definitely in the conversation, I'll leave in as many questions that I see in the chat box as well. Uh, the reason I'm jumping into this and snatching this moment is that this is definitely a, a proud moment for me for a couple of reasons and I must say it in this forum. Uh, I've been speaking in so many forums, but uh, I am associated with this. I got introduced into this forum as a speaker about a month ago. And the first question that Dr. Harish asked me was, what is it that you want to give back to the fraternity? And this is the first time somebody has asked me this question. And the reason I'm here again and again is uh, what this forum is doing is actually to give back to the fraternity. And I'm, I'm seeing a lot of engagement from the participants. So I'm extremely proud to be here. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I've just been a guest over and over again, but uh, feel, it all, already feels like family. Secondly, why today is definitely a proud moment for me is um, um, Bruhad was my recommendation to be brought here as a speaker. And as always, uh, he has not let me down at all. Uh, he touched upon all those points, which I really wanted to give back to the fraternity as myths which need to be busted on the learning and development front. I have seen uh, Bruhad grow, evolve as an absolutely thorough professional. It's a moment of pride for me uh, to, to see his first book also getting released. So this is definitely a day in history for me. So therefore, I, I want to grab this moment in having this conversation. Right? So of the, of the various myths you spoke about, Bruhad, uh, there's a question from Vaishnavi here. And it is linked to one of the myths that you said. Okay, so Vaishnavi says it is very difficult to plan an effective development intervention for top management uh, because they have the know-it-all attitude and uh, it is important for their upgradation as well for the organization. So we have had this experience when we work together, right? So, 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 so talking in the context of development uh, being uh, not transactional but transformational, uh, can you share one of the experiences which we have had? Sure. Um, so uh, it's a very interesting question that you asked with because you know this is a question that has come to me from people, and uh, the only uh, thing I want to ask you, as uh, you know, for reflection and introspection, and of course I will give an answer. All right, so I'm not one of those because I'll take it offline. Uh, the question that I want to ask you is: Did you plan the training for them, or did you ask them what they want as a program for their learning? Now, when you're introspecting on this question, let me give you an answer to how you can deal with, uh, you know, this mere tick in the mark, uh, tick in the box. Uh, see, at an age, at a certain age, you know, people uh, feel, uh, and uh, especially at a senior management that, you know, we, we know this, we know that we've been there, we've done that. So busting that particular myth is very, very important. And the only way you can do it is through transformational coaching. Uh, this is where every intervention and mind my words, it's not a training program. I'm talking about an intervention that you do for the senior leadership has to be more of a coaching piece wherein they talk more, you listen more rather than a trainer coming and telling them what to do. Today, what has happened is everybody loves to give advice. Tell me one person who does not love to give advice. And at that level, they are like, yeah, the millennials today are not listening to me. The top management is not listening to me. Now the trainer is also not listening to me. So jau to jau kahan. Aur ghar pe aise bhi meri baat koi sunta nahi hai. So where do I go? So you are not able to put those points forward. And that is what happens in a transformative coaching kind of a piece. Wherein it's related to let's say emotional intelligence. 
and again please do not go by the words of emotional intelligence training here i'm talking about transformational coaching which happens through a series of conversations not judgments biases or assumptions and i'm saying that being a transformational coach myself so whenever i am doing a program for a senior leadership team the entire program number one is ppt less all right so there is no re requirement for a powerpoint presentation it is more of a conversation that i have with them and never have more than five or six senior members in that particular hall and you will be like good but the investment is too high and that is where the uh, myth uh, that harini was talking about comes into the picture as soon as you say it's a training cost you are already thinking that it is a cost and you are going in the negative zone if it is an investment then you have to have the conversation with your top notch leaders to make them realize something and go back to the story of the owl and the fox did the owl say that you need emotional intelligence to move forward no the owl made the fox realize that there is um, there is something that is lacking and when that realization happens that will make the senior leadership turn into something which will make them to go forward so the first thing you have to start your program with is saying this is not a training program in this program we want you to come up with things that can help you become your version 2.0 and this is not about what the organization needs at this point in time wo hum alignment baad mein kar lenge because that is the learning development functions job and not the functional manager's job so arini this is the myth that we had busted at uh, you know the, the place where we worked is that it's not about uh, you know those people trying and saying that we are aligned to the organizational vision and values that is our job we have to give that from the back end so vaishnavi two things that you can take away from here one is make it a conversational intervention which is let's say a five months to a six month intervention which is more of a conversation based intervention and number two is let them decide their own journey and you from the back end give them the support which can align to the organizational goals and if you want to know more please hire me i will come That's it. So here's a question from uh, Colin Roach. So quickly, I think we should take this question, and before we take the conversation ahead, so if, so with uh, companies adopting digital learning methodologies, how do you suggest we should go about with measuring effectiveness of learning? Uh, learning. So what what are your uh, tips on that? Uh, I expected Colin to ask this question. I don't know why, <laughs> but I really expected him to do that. All right. Um, <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> uh i am not too sure whether uh, um you know uh, the team is aware of something called as a capacity matrix uh, i'm sorry to be using this jargon but you know this uh, this question requires a jargon uh you know there is a competency uh, matrix there's a capability matrix but there is something which is known as a capacity matrix and a capacity matrix basically uh, you know disillusions the competency and capability and it is focused on assignment based effectiveness all right so uh, uh, so to answer colin's question directly uh, i was uh, consulting with an organization when they asked me you know how we can do this because i was coaching their hr team and uh, the hr team came up with this that how are we able to do this so i helped them create a capacity matrix based on the assignments now they are undergoing you know these courses from coursera udemy edx and all those pieces and they are getting this 85% certificate dikha diya we have done a great job and you know that is how the people are measuring so what i said is ask each and every person who has undergone that to create a storyboard and a journey all right this storyboard and a journey will tell them over a period of 3 years how are they going to convert one learning from this program into a habit and how is it going to impact their role per se which will help in the uh, in the growth of revenue for the organization like this you have around 15 assignments in the capacity matrix each of them has a measure of either a turnaround time or a percentage or a number which is attached to it and then uh, create something called as a solution statement so in design thinking we always use solution statements which starts with a verb and it focuses on the how all right so something like you know design a digital workbook for the people to learn application based tools in so and so function so that's the solution statement so 15 assignment tasks can be divided into 15 solution statements they can be given a measure of a number a turnaround time or a percentage and that can be measured over a period of time rather than saying you know okay uh, are you able to immediately apply this or not for the behavioral learning skills for the functional and the technical you will be able to see an immediate application so you must ask uh, you know these uh, these uh, heads to have their uh, team coached by them on how they are going to transfer this learning to them and how is their team going to implement this on the job 
So not only does the learning stay with the manager, but it also goes to down the line. And if the down the line, the execution team is able to execute it, you will automatically be able to see that, you know, the manager is effective or not. And this is something that I'm not too sure whether you can do this, but you can put a 10% weightage in a KRA, which can showcase that, you know, your thing is being measured over a period of time. And all of this can go into an LMS, which can have an algorithm and all of that. So uh, the simple answer to digital learning is have a capacity matrix. Uh, you can Google it. And uh, in case you uh, don't know what a capacity matrix is, hire me. <laughs> nice. Right. So, I hope uh, my yeah, so there are other other questions which are around uh, what I, I want you to talk about. Uh, one of the myths that I, I really want you to touch upon is you, you didn't cover it very explicitly, but uh, we have discussed this a lot and I want uh, everybody in this forum to get an advantage of that, especially people who are in the training or learning and development function right now in this group. This is, this is actually a myth for them. There is this typical feeling that uh, learning and development or training, even if we use it interchangeably for convenience right now, there is a myth that it is a glamorous profession. To make training kardo and people come out feeling very happy and it's a glamorous uh, a part of the HR function. And normally people who are on the HR operations side always feel that they have to do the dirty jobs and the, the cream is carried away by the person who is running the learning and development or the training function. Now, credibility of, uh, I mean, building credibility of the learning and development sub function is in itself a huge task and it is not as glamorous as you see it. So I want you to break that myth of glamour. Oh, that's a tough one, actually, because, you know, it's, it's a entire we, two days. We did, that. We, we did that. So say that, say the gist of it for, for, for these people. And this will probably answer uh, Haley's question on employee engagement also, because, mm, uh, yes. you know, see, Credibility of the learning team is based on the kind of, uh, you know, uh, portrayal that uh, an L&D team gives, all right? Now, uh, what I have seen in uh, many uh, organizations, and even I used to do it in the past, so, you know, let, let me be honest, that when I started my training journey, like, I know that I have training, I have five on five, I have got five on five types. And that is what is happening, that we try to show some numbers. We try to show things to the management saying, you know, we are contributing to the organization. And that doesn't go as a subtle message through the actions of the employees, which is where it is showing, showcasing more as we are trying to brand ourselves in a way that, you know, we are doing a good job, which is where, you know, the other teams are finding it very offensive because, uh, you know, HR operations deals with a lot of data, deals with a lot of analytics and all of that. Whereas a training function does both, but the focus goes more on that training event per se. Now, trust me, for an eight hour training event, a trainer or a facilitator has to really work for one and a half to two years to bring in that wow factor, to bring in that factor of saying, you know, these eight hours were really, really value add for me. And today, why we are able to speak without a presentation in front of you is because of those 12, 15 years of experience. It is not something that I've picked up from Google and trying to tell you. Now, let's see if I was, let's say, two years in the learning fraternity, I may not be able to tell you so much uh, because, you know, I may not have experienced it. This is where the credibility of the learning team comes into the picture. Have your ex employees experienced a change? Have the employees and the management experienced that there is something happening over there? And if they've experienced that, your perception and your credibility will change. And I'll give you a very beautiful example over here because uh, when I joined the organization, Harini was confronted by a lot of leaders saying that, you know, this guy is very young, number one, right? He doesn't have gray hair or no hair. So he's not even from this industry, he doesn't understand this industry per se. So she still went ahead and did this. It took me one and a half years, all right, literally one and a half years to keep doing things without doing any branding. And then, you know, there were two uh, functional heads who called me and said, you know, bro, one and a half years back, we are taking our words back because you have brought a change in this particular department and we are thankful to you for that. And this Mary or Harini ke saamne boli thi, and then next was saying, Harini, this was the right decision. Trust me, that is the moment I will never ever forget. I email not testimonial nahi testimonial. What we want as an LND team is for the functional leaders to come and tell us that you have made a difference to our life and we believe now that whatever you do, you will do for the benefit of this organization, for the benefit of this team. Absolutely. So, so it's, now, it's how do you not, build this credibility? Yeah, so it's not, it's, it's definitely experience, but not necessarily length of experience, but I would say 
it is depth of experience even if you have fewer years of experience if if that is in depth and you know how to uh, what is the the problem and you can anticipate before and then come up with the, with solutions that is what uh, that brings in credibility right yeah so sorry for interrupting carry on not a problem and when the depth of experience comes into picture this is where your entire shift goes from engagement to experience Absolutely. and this is where the difference is uh, and this is i'm answering a uh, haley's question directly we think about employee engagement but trust me engaged employees also can leave the organization and there has been a uh, i'm sure all of you believe in these gallup surveys and gptw surveys because they are big names so they have also proved it and even mckinsey has proved it that engaged employees are not necessarily the people who stay retained the people who stay retained are the ones who get a great experience the working experience is great the environment is great and the learning function can focus on experience rather than engagement because whenever the word engagement comes into the picture i'm sure all of you are feeling uh, you know and there are youtube memes and these stupid videos that are coming out rangoli wala department hai you know balloon wala department hai and i feel so frustrated because you know come what may you know hr is very close to my heart and you know these buggers are just trying to demean the hr function by saying that you know you guys are just good for rangoli designing and all of that but trust me that thing has been built by us it's not something that somebody else is saying so when you shift from giving uh, an experience to the employees that can help them connect with you that can help them to realize that you are actually genuinely there for them and trying to make a difference for them things will change completely and this is where i want to talk a initiative about uh, uh, harini's which she had used and i was honestly uh, at that point in time not too sure of that initiative it was called walk the talk and in walk the talk uh, the simple uh, uh, you know command uh, that i think this was the only command that she's given in her entire career was that you have to first prove that you are doing this and you know this particular business in order for others to follow what you are trying to say aise hi gyan mat baato pehle khud ghuso uske baad dusron ko gyan baato and this is the uh, uh, sorry to the stretch uh, stretches but this is another place where one of the organizations that i worked with had done a very beautiful thing they had dedicated 25% of our kras into sales saying that tumhara jitna ctc hai multiplied by 10 times you have to go and sell because it was a retail store and uh, you know we had to go and sell right unless you understand the customer unless you understand their pain how are you going to train these people and i did the same with the engineering industry no i did not go and do construction and uh, design but what i did is i sat with the entire engineering team to understand what is the pain that they go through when they are speaking to people what are the kind of uh, you know setbacks that they are facing and when i understood all of that i realized that we cannot do programs which are just tick in the box or you know programs which will just tell me that you know i have trained 5000 people in the year we have so many mandates and fantastic you got a 12% 15% of your appraisal this is how you build credibility because if you are going to go by your kra sheet if you are going to go by your kpi sheet and of course these are also interchangeably used but if you are going to go by your goal sheet and all of that it is never going to help your credibility move from engagement to experience as soon as you do that you will be able to build credibility and that is where everything will start falling into place because you will start seeing the effectiveness you get genuine feedback up aayega think bro you really wanted to change my life no please do this and that is how uh, you know you can build credibility over a period of time and and i loved uh, colin's remark that experiences last longer uh, since they carry a lot more emotions and that's 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 amazing because engagement is just uh, uh, you know uh, dis- taking discretionary effort without uh, any conditions unconditional discretionary effort is engagement but experience goes a lot beyond way beyond that and that's that's where we are we are now trying to move fantastic um, and dara is actually empathizing with the rangoli memes <laughs> so very true yeah that's true um so um mehir wants to voice his question he's refused to type it for me so he wants to be heard so mehir you can unmute yourself and ask your question thank you thank you thank you am i audible yes mehir you are audible please tell me yeah hi bruhad so first of all i would like to thank uh, harini for uh, you know yes uh, forcing me in fact to uh, attend this one it was a wonderful session bruhad so thank you so much for that now uh, see i have been um, majorly associated with msme sector uh, since last 4 5 years now uh, directly indirectly with lnd uh, so my question is 
see uh, i am a firm believer of processes so whenever we used to uh, you know pitch any uh, lnd sessions it has to it, it would be always be a 3 6 9 12 sessions so it uh, the magic doesn't happen in one session you know so i have always, always been a firm believer that if a owner msme owner go for a uh, a one year contract or a 12 sessions then and then this lnd team or a trainer or a people like us who are into training uh, fraternity can actually make a difference that's how i have always been believed but right. the problem is on ground reality what happens we uh, uh, you know pitch for a 3 6 9 12 sessions and then hamari hi fraternity mein se ek banda aata hai bolte hai main 5000 rupaye mein ek session karke jaunga a motivational <laughs> session or maybe you know and and uh, this actually have happened so i i am so curious to know from you bruhar that uh, so what should be the solution for this you know all right uh, <laughs> आपने एक्चुअली दुखती नस पे हाथ रख दिया यू नो बिकॉज आई बी ट्राइंग टू एंटर द एम एस एम एन ऑफकोर्स थैंकफुली आई गॉट वन एंड दिस विल ऑल्सो आंसर हिमानी क्वेश्चन ऑन वॉट एल एन डी इनिशियटिव कैन बी प्लान फॉर अ स्टार्टअप मीर ऑनेस्टली द ओनली सोल्यूशन टू दिस इज दैट नो द ओनर हैज टू अंडरस्टैंड द वैल्यू दैट अ थ्री सिक्स नाइन ट्वेल्व विल ब्रिंग वर्स इज अ फाइव थाउजेंड प्रोग्राम and trust me you are absolutely right it's very difficult to convince them because you know msmes are mostly going ke kitna kharcha hoega and wo kharcha jab wo cost part aata hai it becomes very difficult to convince people because uh, you know that that's where the problem is so uh, you know i tried something and probably it may help you i'm not too sure whether it will or not but uh, you know i gave uh, you know uh, this uh, gentleman who was in this msme piece uh you know a, a pizza shaped uh, uh you know uh, presentation and the presentation started the pizza shape and i had made pieces of those pizza right and uh, you know and i actually went over there and i uh, you know i i took a uh, you know a box of biscuits to him and uh, you know he thought i'm bribing him all right but it was not a bribe it was like i i wanted to prove something so i said yes sir uh, you know why not uh, you know please have this biscuit and uh, you know and i was showing him the presentation लाइक प्रेजेंटेशन बहुत बढ़िया है तुम्हारा मतलब सर थैंक यू वेरी मच बिस्किट का एक पीस थोड़ा और उनको मैंने दे दिया सो यू नो दीज कराची बेकरी बिस्किट्स यू नो दैट देयर इज अ फ्रूट बिस्किट व्हिच कम्स इन सो मैंने ऊपर का चेरी निकाला और उनको दे दिया एंड इज लाइक ब्रो आर यू हियर टू इंसल्ट मी और समथिंग लाइक दैट व्हाई आर यू गिविंग मी दिस चेरी मतलब सर आपने इस मेरे पहले वो 5000 वाले ट्रेनर को लिया ना सर इतने पैसे में इतना ही मिलेगा ना आपको सिंपल सी बात है बिकॉज अगर आपको पूरा बिस्किट खाना है और लुत्फ उठाना है पूरे बिस्किट का तो आपको ये करना पड़ेगा कि आपको समझना पड़ेगा कि 5000 हजार वर्सेज हम लोग जो कर रहे हैं उससे क्या फर्क पड़ता है नंबर वन नंबर टू इज आई एम गोइंग टू गिव यू अ गारंटी एट दिस पॉइंट इन टाइम सेइंग दैट आई विल डू ऑल योर सेशन फॉर फ्री ठीक है पूरे साल में मैं सारे सेशन फ्री करूंगा बट एट द एंड ऑफ द ईयर अगर आपको रेवेन्यू या प्रॉफिट बनता है उसका पांच आप मेरे को ट्रांसफर कर देना सो इधर यू डू दैट or you give me a contract which is uh, you know uh, a lump sum contract you choose what you want to do what you don't want to do and this guy was he started thinking ye 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 kya bol raha hai i mean ye revenue profit sharing ki baat kahan se aa gayi and uh, of course i had studied the balance sheet and i knew ke wo business acha chalne wala hai don't try this everywhere so when i showed him that you know when you are investing in something you are able to get the full value of this particular piece versus that 5000 10000 piece because end of the day wo log jo ppts aate hain ya to slide shares jo hota hai ye hota hai wo hota hai and uh, you know then the credibility part comes into picture so the idea was a conversation and it was not about pitching uh, the program per se even in that pizza shape all i had shown was numbers saying that ki agar aap lnd intervention karte hain to aapko kya kya fayda ho sakta hai aur agar aap ek single program karte hain to aapko kya kya fayda ho sakta hai the idea is to understand that this msme owner is thinking about money he is thinking about kahan pe paisa dalu ke mere ko 10 times return mile 20 times return mile yeah. so the pitch has to go like that versus saying that ke sir why let's do a lnd intervention 369 till mein aapko fayda hoga so the approach thoda sa alag hai baki things are absolutely remaining the same but dusra piece ye bhi hai ke kahin na kahin agar aapka koi jack hai kahi influence lag raha hai so use that influence because with msme and uh, startups your uh, influence uh, will probably work somewhere or the other and this is also true for a startup because when you go to a startup the idea is for a startup to realize what is the value that they are going to get versus saying ki main din ka kitna kharcha lene wala hu ya you know ye program ka kitna kharcha lene wala 
So if we are able to change that mindset a little bit by knowing the personality of the uh, owner or the, uh, you know, the, the CEO or whosoever that person is, the proprietor, uh, that is where the pitch will change, but your uh, piece should work over there. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bert. Thank you. Thanks, Manish. Harini, you're on mute. I just want to bring about one more uh, experience of ours uh, uh, where Prahad and I actually uh, challenged ourselves to bring about a transformation. Uh, mm -hmm. so, so we inherited or rather I inherited and uh, brought him on board to share my uh, uh, agony. Uh, I inherited uh, in, in an organization where training was restricted, uh, the training function or the training team was restricted to booking meeting rooms and ordering uh, lunch and snacks. Right? That was what was uh, what I inherited as a training team. Uh, and, and the whole idea of getting somebody like Bruhad on board was to bring about that transformation. Uh, because uh, my judgment about, about, about him as an individual and his approach was that he does not play victim ever. Right? So if I have to, and, and I had a target of, of you know, bringing about this transformation in a year and a half. That the maximum I could go was two years. Because I had a five-year uh, journey map with me where I wanted to bring about certain changes. So this was this had to be done in a year and a half, max to max two years. So uh, not having a victim mindset and actually uh, putting into practice whatever was, was a big picture, a very big uh, 36,000 feet view picture, uh, bringing that into practice and making a transformation where the organization even now has, is, is still clinging on to a lot of those, even though teams have changed, people have moved on and all that. So, Rohan, I want you to talk about very quickly about how did we bring about that transformation and with both of us not having that victim mindset, how did we go bang on and get started on that and bring the transformation? We, we, we faced a lot of hurdles, right? We faced a lot of hurdles, uh, uh, rejects, I mean, not taking this idea, even the team members who were reporting into you. So, talk about all of that. Uh, that's that's a nice, very emotional story, but I won't go into the emotions. But, uh, you know, I resonate with what Mihir said. Uh, the reason for that is, you know, I'm also a Six Sigma person. So I was also a very critical thinker till I was introduced to this beautiful methodology called design thinking and uh, this beautiful person called Harini Srinivasan, all right? Uh, what we started off when we used to discuss is uh, the, the meetings were very interesting the way we used to do it. Uh, the meetings were never focused on what we are going to do. The first, we started by saying, why are we doing what we are doing, right? What is the value proposition for whatever we are doing? How is it going to really bring about a change in the way people uh, think about this? How is it that, uh, you know, you, you're going to bring about this kind of a transformational change that you're looking at? Because each character in the team was very, 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 very different. So we said, you know, uh, you know, charity always begins at home. So let's start by collecting all our people. And let's see whether they believe that this uh, particular piece of, uh, you know, mentoring, coaching or training or learning is something that they believe as an investment or also they believe as a cost. So we started something called as HR LNLs. All right. Uh, this was uh, the HR lunch and learn. And when it started off, uh, it was a very typical thing. And Harini got so pissed at one point in time because, you know, even I was like, um, you know, Harini, I don't think this is working out. How will we bring a change in the other people if we're not able to bring a change in our own team? So she actually lost her pool at that point in time and said, we will run this workshop without having lunch at that day. Let's see how many people come. All right. And then we started doing it. So the first three or four sessions, I remember that, uh, you know, only two or three people came in. But the two or three people, when they went out, they started doing something. All right. They started doing something and people were like, Ye kya kar tum? Ye kya naya chalu kiya? And the only instruction to them was, uh, you know, you have to attend the session to know what we are doing. But it's not so And when we started doing that, slowly, I think after six or seven LNLs, we had a full house and we started saying, now do you realize the value of this particular piece? And when that touched their heart, what they started doing is they started going, introducing themselves in the walk the talk and started, uh, you know, implementing these things. There was a lot of pressure from the management saying, ye sab nahi chalega, ye nahi karna hai, wo nahi karna hai. Tum jao, pehle benchmark karo processes, ye karo, wo karo, get a policy statement done, revise this policy, all of that and all of that. And the entire team used to come and, you know, we used to discuss with Harini and Harini said, forget about whatever they said, let us not benchmark, let us go by this, let us go by this, benchmarking dikha denge jab dikhana hoga tab. But the idea over here is to give them value. 
and the only words with which we ended the meeting was we want to give them value and trust me it was like you know hitting your head on a stone aapko pata hai ki aapka khoon beh raha hai aur par aur surgeon bhi nahi baitha hua wahan pe jo stitch karega humko khud ko hi stitch karna hai but the entire passion or the entire thing was that we want to become better versions of ourselves because when we go out from here the organization should remember us by saying that ye team tha jo sabse acha team tha aur ye team jaisa koi other team nahi hai agar ruhad aur hari nahi hai to kaam hoga warna nahi hoga and that's exactly what we got to here because when we started pushing them so badly they were like you guys are just persisting this is not going to work it's a traditional industry people are with traditional mindset you know 25 30 years of experience in the same domain they will not listen to you like come what may hum to karwa ke rahenge persistence hai karna hi hai and that is where uh, the thing that i have written on the chat box is we focused on a unique buying proposition versus a unique selling proposition unique selling proposition is what are we doing differently whereas a unique buying proposition is why should you hire me or why should you come to me so that i can add value to you aur wo karne ke liye humko kareeban 1.5 saal laga but even today uh, we have people from them coming and telling us and you know both uh, apne aur harini ne jo ye 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 intervention kiye the na we can never forget that and the best example for that is uh, we had created something called as english language articulation program banaya tha which was uh, very nicely structured and all of that but uh, i didn't want to do that program because meri english itni achhi nahi hai in the technical side so i went and uh, not requested but told harini and uh, i have never seen a boss employee relationship like this but i told harini uh, harini you are supposed to be taking this module but this is the structure and she said forget the structure i have told you hamesha ke hum kyun kar rahe hain why are we doing this and i explained to her this is the value proposition and all of that and these guys were uh, you know from vernacular medium uh, they were in the engineering sector for 15 years and all of them were being made fun of saying that tum angrezi sikho 15 saal ke baad engineering karo na angrezi sikh ke aapko kya karna hai but their role demanded for them to speak to canada us uk gulf and all those pieces where english was required because they were not able to articulate english so the difference was this was not about english language and grammar and punctuation this was more about articulating what is being uh, said to them and putting that into their technical function per se remember engagement experience so it's not about engaging them in the english conversation it's more about giving them an experience which tells them how do you articulate this english language it was a six month program that uh, we had done and every single time you know I, we were taunted we were made fun of and even some of our team members made fun of us in the beginning all right so let me be honest with that but uh, you know the the function head also said bro tum log karna hai karo but this is not going to work for you we persisted with that and the day i left the organization harini calls me two days after that and the first time i can see tears in her eyes and she's like you know what bro i have got these 15 people come to me and you know uh, come to me just to say that you have added a value to my life by uh, you know creating this uh, module called english language articulation and harini the first person she thought of was me because you know we had uh, you know brought this baby together and trust me after that there were four batches which happened and none of the functional leaders denied they actually sent in more people by saying ki ye 15 log are your change agents and they will bring about this entire change so the the focus over here is to not really brand ourselves but the focus over here is to tell that what harini and i used to think of when we were working together is jo hamare paas aa raha hai are they going to take away something from this particular uh, conversation or the interaction if that is not going to happen might as well not have that conversation but if you are doing a conversation we assure you that you will take away something that will really change your life for good and with that your entire credibility uh, goes up and that was the push that we had to give so you know that that like i said it's a very emotional and very passionate story absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. so yeah so so the whole the reason i brought this up here is this is one function which comes under the hr umbrella where uh, if you really think about what is a kind of transformation or mindset change you want, you want to bring in the organization It, it touches upon every single person at all levels. Okay, it's the, it, there is no oh, there is no restriction. You can start from the CEO and down to the junior most person, and you want to bring that change. You can try and try that change. This function gives you all. It's just that you need to feel empowered. Uh, you know, have the conviction that uh, as learning and development professionals, you can drive that change, and then just go go for it. That's what it is. 
if you keep if you bust these myths that were beautifully put uh, uh, articulated right in the beginning i think the first thing if you if you 